World of Color is less than a month away from returning construction and demolition happening all over the Disneyland Resort, plus how the Paradise Pier Hotel has failed guests. That and so much more, it's time to drop in to Disneyland. Hey there, hi there, hello there, it's Wade for the Kingdom Report, back with you once again at the Disneyland Resort today to drop in like we do, covering both theme parks, the Downtown Disney District, and all three Disneyland Resort hotels. Let's not waste any time, we've got a lot to cover today. First and foremost, health and safety measures continue to change throughout the Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World Resort, but more specifically, they are now strongly recommending that guests wear face coverings while indoors, regardless of vaccination status, as a reminder, Vaccination status is not checked at the Disneyland Resort. It is an honor system. Inside Disneyland we go, where our first stop today is going to be in New Orleans Square, because there is an awful lot going on here. Lots of construction walls and scrims have gone up in front of Pirates of the Caribbean, mainly to remove all of the dead trees that happen to be in the queue space, as well as reroute the queue space entirely for the sake of tucking all of those big crowds waiting to get on the ride out of the walkway like we have seen them for many years up until this point, they want to get rid of that problem, which is fantastic. Opening up the walkways is so important. And speaking of opening up the walkways, you see just over here to the right how long construction walls are stretching for the sake of leveling out many of the elevated spaces that were originally installed for phantasmic viewing areas. They now are going to level those out and make the entire space in front of New Orleans Square and the riverfront much more manageable, much more guest walking friendly, especially for the sake of when Phantasmic does return to us in late May. They want all of this space usable and much more simple for the sake of staging people for the show. You see lots of work still going on on the Phantasmic platforms and structures. We take a look down into one. You realize just how deep these go for the sake of getting this show back in action to us by late May. Can't wait to see it. And for those of you who need your pirate fix, fear not. Captain Jack Sparrow is above Pirates of the Caribbean right now, saying hello to all who walk his way. And further into New Orleans Square we go, you see that this Princess and the Frog themed retail outlet, or so we've been led to believe will be in this space, still has no signs of progress and Disney remains mum on the issue. Sailing ship Columbia is still in its dry dock along the rivers of America, getting ready to set sail again in late spring. Over to Toontown we go, where one attraction still remains open, and that is Mickey's Toontown Train Depot. This is where you can grab the train and ride around the entire park. However, the land itself for Mickey's Toontown completely closed at this point. The walls are up, and that is because we are preparing for this land to get completely reimagined and have a new attraction open up in 2023. That will be Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. Looking forward to the land's reimagining. We move on over to Main Street USA. Disneyland is looking fresh and clean and oh so vibrant with all the spring colors seeping in. Not just natural beauty here on Main Street, but also hard work and elbow grease beauty has come to Main Street and the facades have been getting worked on. You see here the Crystal Arcade recently coming back to us from its facade work, looking bright and shiny. Uh, right across the street, we always like to check in on the Silhouette Studio. The area here is completely closed still after Disneyland has yet to reopen it following its own reopening. And hopefully with the relaxed masking guidelines, we'll see the Silhouette Studio back with us very soon. And further up the street, Plaza Point, the new holiday shop retail space. Well, they are all decked out for springtime in here. It's really cool to see that as the seasons change, so does the decor in the holiday shop. And uh, no doubt they are living up to all the expectations that they put forward. Down in Town Square, you see Donald Duck still doing his distanced meet and greets. That is how many of the character interactions are going on still at this time. And hopefully we will see these characters hugging us once again in the near future. We jump on back to Splash Mountain in Critter Country now, where Splash recently came out of its long winter's nap and is refreshed, revived, and renewed for the sake of welcoming everybody on into the Briar Patch. And just behind Splash Mountain, Winnie the Pooh and the Hundred Acre Gang are meeting once again in their themed area. Still at a distance, but at least they are back at home. And we jump from our friends in Critter Country to our friends in Fantasyland, where the new Merlin shop has opened up just behind Sleeping Beauty Castle. While the theming in terms of props looks okay, 
this new store that has been sort of revitalized in an area that used to be a holiday themed shop really just has merchandise you can find everywhere else. Uh, there's nothing really spectacular in here to stop off and take a look at, especially given the fact that this store is so tiny. So unfortunate to say the least. Moving along now to other areas of Fantasyland, we do see that the Royal Theater is back from its brief refurbishment, everything looking vibrant and colorful, and the interior space of it looking like it's just about ready to go for the sake of bringing those vaudevillian-style entertainment shows back, especially because we are now witnessing that the princesses are being kept over in front of the Royal Hall instead of being under that canopy now. And Pixie Hollow is back open, yes! Isn't this exciting? We get to meet Tinkerbell back inside her very own meet and greet location. This area has always been outside, uh, not necessarily sure what took so long in terms of getting Tinkerbell's meet and greet back, but it is now in place. Fantasyland Theater is where we are going next, and you will see here that the stage is being prepared for the sake of the new Lion King theme show that is coming later this year. Summertime for the Lion King. And in Adventureland, unfortunately, we are still seeing that Tarzan's Treehouse remains behind all of the work that's going on. Yes, we believe that there is infrastructure issues and that it is not safe to open up this attraction, and therefore that is why it has blown through so many of its deadlines to return. In Tomorrowland, you see the Finding Nemo submarine voyage still with walls up. This was supposed to come back to us. Resurfacing winter 2022 is the language Disney was using. Well, those signs are gone, and now you see work is still underway for the sake of the Finding Nemo submarine voyage coming back to us. We are now hoping perhaps a mid or late spring return will be in its future. And from Disneyland, we jump out to the downtown Disney district where so much construction and demolition is going on, ready to reimagine that west end of downtown Disney going towards the Disneyland Hotel. You look right between where the AMC Theater building and the entrance used to be, and you can see the Paradise Beer Hotel from here now. That's something you never used to be able to see. With this sort of wide shot view, you get a good idea as to just how much space there is to work with now that they've demolished Starbucks, Sugar Boo, as well as the AMC Theater Complex, and next to go, is the Earl of Sandwich building, RIP. We look forward to seeing what comes next in this area. Welcome to Disney California Adventure, where not only is it a beautiful spring day, it's also time for the Food and Wine Festival. The 2022 Food and Wine Festival now underway, and the story here is the lines. So much demand has come on into this park for the sake of the 12 different festival marketplaces. And yes, everywhere you go, every land you go into that has these marketplaces completely inundated with interest, even this one stretching all the way back to Paradise Bay and the World of Color Lagoon area. It is wild to see, to say the least, as we like to remind everybody, uh, don't waste time in the order line for the sake of trying to buy something from each location. As the signs even say, order from one festival marketplace, pick it up at another. That will save you at least a little bit of time. However, even the order lines for the sake of getting what you want and then the pickup lines tend to be very, very long. So bring your patience. Festival Beer Garden back in action. Paradise Garden Grill also with its sort of flexible style of menu for the sake of this food and wine festival. Participating locations across California Adventure. I mean, there's like 13 of them. Basically all the quick service and dining restaurants that you have in the park are also participating with their own unique menu items to help complement the Food & Wine Festival. Tons of Entertainment is also returning to the festival, bringing a sense of normalcy I have not felt in a very long time in this park, including demonstrations back at the Hollywood Backlot stage. In addition to that, a very special event for the kiddos, Alice's Wonderland Bakery Unbirthday Party. Kids ages 3 to 11 are invited to step into Alice's Bakery to create Wonderland magic with special visits from guest chefs in a deliciously fun, hands-on cupcake decorating class. This is something that brings so much joy to the kids and the families, and the host on stage interacts with the Disney Junior characters themselves. It is a lot of fun to say the least, and certainly something that if you have kids ages 3 to 11 that are interested, definitely worth showing up for. It is free. And right around the corner from that stage, if you still need culinary inspiration, then look no further than Chef Goofy. 
Here in Hollywood land, lots of work has been going on for the sake of repaving the sidewalks. That looks to be completed in certain sections, both here in front of Gone Hollywood and across the street at Disney Junior Dance Party. But now work has begun and walls have gone up in front of the animation building and right alongside Schmoozies. Elsewhere in the Hollywood backlot section, you do see that this giant building that was once dedicated to the Captain Marvel meet and greet, not only is the Avengers sign down, but the jet is gone, revealing the old artwork that you used to be able to pose in front of. This building has a lot of space in it. Who knows what they will do with it and what the plans are now that the walls are up. We slide on out to the World of Color Lagoon and Pixar Pier where the stage is being set for World of Color's big return come April the 22nd. I know that these lighthouses had to be completely reconstructed from scratch as most of the staging and platform rigging also had to be reconstructed. Kudos to the team that brought this show back to life. Right next door, Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, the restaurant that just recently reopened, has brought back its pizza. However, many online are claiming that the portion sizes are significantly smaller than they have been used to in the past. And you'll see here for yourself exactly what these portion sizes look like. For eight to nine dollars, do you feel like you're getting a good value? Do you feel like those slices are smaller than they used to be? We heard from the Disney CFO that this was the plan to shrink portion sizes and raise prices. We also see over here in the Grizzly Peak Recreation Area, the Grizzly River Run remains closed up until March the 30th for its long winter refurbishment. Cannot wait to get the splashing good times back in action here at California Adventure. Moving on into Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa now, the lobby looking so beautiful, the piano back where it belongs in the middle of the lobby. And in addition to that, they've added an Oscar. Yeah, you can have your photo in front of your very own Oscar, life size that is, right here in the Grand Californian lobby. It is a celebration of Oscars as it is Oscar season. And one of the things that they have now kept in the lobby that is just a terrific compliment is this sort of snack bar treat area right here in the corner of the lobby. They theme it to different holidays, different seasons, and right now they are prepared for Easter. Drop by and grab yourself a snack. While filming this update, I was approached by a couple from Canada who'd spent 12 grand to bring their grandkids to the Disneyland Resort, staying here at Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel. They wanted to know if I knew of any restaurants that were available in the area that they could dine at, mainly because Paradise Pier Hotel has such a lack of amenities. They were voicing their frustration to me and saying just how disappointed they were in spending the 12 grand to come on this vacation and how the Paradise Pier Hotel literally has nothing open inside of it. We've been covering this for you for months here, and finally I heard it from somebody that's experiencing it directly. Not only is their lounge completely empty and there is no quick service option in this restaurant, the sit-down character dining option that they also had has been shuttered and never reopened even after the pandemic has allowed other restaurants to reopen across the resort. They said that the PCH Grill just isn't coming back in its current form and that they will reopen it at a later date. Mix with the restaurants being offline, in addition to that, you also have the pool services at this hotel completely shut down for the time being as they do all kinds of work on the pool deck. With these amenities locked up and with so little being offered at this hotel while still charging premium prices, they have indeed failed their consumer base, at least according to these guests that came from Canada, and they said they probably won't be back anytime soon. Steakhouse 55 over at the Disneyland Hotel remains shuttered in mothballs. We are waiting to see what replaces this location as Disney said something new is coming to the space in the future. And yes, lots of construction work continues out here at the Disneyland Hotel for the sake of rising up the new Disney Vacation Club Tower just beyond the pool area. We are starting to see lots of vertical construction happen and look forward to seeing that tower when it gets finished in the coming years. Hey, if you haven't done so already, drop a comment for us. Let us know if you feel like portion sizes are shrinking or if there's less value than ever before at the Disneyland Resort. We'd love to hear from you. In addition to that, if you haven't done so already, make sure you are subscribed with that notification bell turned on so you don't miss a thing. Thumbs up is always appreciated. And for the Kingdom Report, I'm Wade Heath. We'll see you next time for another installment of the Disneyland Drop-In. Happy place. Welcome.